What's up, Wikimaniacs? On today's episode, we have an OP who abandons their date. A husband has an affair after his wife tells him to. A wife is called a vindictive bee. An OP gets intimate with someone she shouldn't. Coworkers get a little frisky. And an OP reunites with a dying ex-girlfriend. For the Patreon exclusive stories, we have a wife who has let herself go. And parents who favor their youngest daughter. If those sound interesting to you and you want day early and ad free episodes, head on over to patreon.com slash cultivate podcast network. Right on wiki starts now. Get therapy. What's up Wikimaniacs? It's your boy Josh here for another Am I the Asshole Friday. It's March. Crazy enough. Uh, <laughs> feels like it was Holy just crap. Christmas. Uh, but I'm joined, of course, with John Consignato, and it, 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 yeah, don't don't even introduce me. I have like, to, you know, it's, I have to, or no, the audio I mean, listeners it's, will be it's, like, it's, "Who the fuck is talking?" <laughs> that's true. I mean, it's we're here all the time, but no, I'm not important. We have a special guest today. But You're go ahead, important. Josh, go You're off. Important. Uh, yes, I'm contractually <laughs> obligated to be here. Okay. <laughs> but I love uh, it. So is Sean, but he's not here today. Uh, in, that's in true. His, in his place. We have back by popular demand, very popular demand from murder, uh, British murders podcast. We have Stuart blues. What's up, Stu? Hi everyone. How are you? <laughs> popular <laughs> demand. Yeah. Who's that? You three. Not Sean. Clearly. No, we had people asking for uh, you back. We had people asking for a long <laughs> time. You. And I it was, I appreciate that. Took a while to get, we're very busy, aren't we? Our respective shows. We're very, 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 busy. very busy, but yeah. I'm going to call oh, out yeah. Sean because <laughs> Hell this, yeah. this is the second time I've been on the show and that motherfucker has bailed again because <laughs> his water's broke. His yeah. words. <laughs> we, we said Stuart's coming back on the podcast and Sean, Sean said, mm, mm. pipe burst today, guys. Yeah, I can't pipe make burst. It. Not that British Sorry. guy again. Dog Fuck ate him. my homework. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be back, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, welcome to be back. Uh, we... I've wanted you on for a while. It is tough because of the time difference, obviously. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, big time. I think the last time we did it, it was very late for you. <laughs> and so yeah. luckily we're doing it at a bit of a better time. This is a good time. It's I, yeah. I call this tea time. So that's my evening meal, dinner, whatever you guys Perfect. want to call it. Mm. But I've not eaten yet. And I've got a, we're having a takeaway this evening. Ooh. So after this. What you having? We're going to have Chinese. Ooh. Ooh. My go-to is going to be Kung Pao chicken. Nice. Good choice. Good choice. Yeah, but controversially, I have it with uh, chips or fries instead of rice. So I don't know how your audience that will, is very controversial. will take that, but that's, that's me. That's me. That's just what I do. Wow. That's, and I thought I, I, I had the whitest taste a, buds here. As a, as a Far East Asian here, I don't know how I I mean, feel the Kung Pao is pretty spicy. You know what I mean? That's There's true. That's true. In there, but, Better cool have, it down have with some the chips. milk on the side or something. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, those don't melt like together types of cuisines. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Salt and pepper uh, wings, you know, salt and pepper wings. And Oh, okay. Now yeah. you're talking. Ooh. Now you're talking. Sounds some, delicious. Oh, man. Yeah, I want some Chinese food after this. God Thanks, damn. guys. It's been good. Uh, I'm just going to go get my food now. <laughs> <laughs> it just leaves us hungry. <laughs> Uh, well, Stuart, uh, I'm bringing you the tea before dinner then today. Uh, I like it. We got some stories we're going to dive into. If that what sounds a good transition. To you. Oh, yeah. What a <laughs> professional, baby. He's good. Let's go, Josh. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got the first one cross posted by Mary Gitz 2011 and Concerned Elegant 8066. <laughs> and Mary Gitz is a goat. So we played the goat button. Yes. Uh, this one was cross posted on our subreddit, and the title is Am I Wrong for Leaving a Date Without Telling Him? A Date Without Telling Him. Okay. Playing Law of Average here. Okay. We've covered a lot. We've covered a lot of bad dates, and it's usually involving dudes being terrible or having table, bad table manners. <laughs> I'm guessing the dude said something out of pocket during the date where she felt endangered or just felt uneasy. So she went up and left. So I'm going to say not the asshole. All right. Stuart, what are you saying? Asshole. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think that's rude. I think that's rude. Depending on the situation, right? So if this guy, let's take it to the extreme. Let's say this guy's been mega narcissistic, violent, abusive, 
chauvinistic, right? Yeah, maybe say you go into the toilet and, and leave him with the bill. But I think in most situations, if you haven't got on with someone, or if it's just not, you're not feeling the vibe, I think you're an asshole if you just leave without telling them. All you have to say is just okay. be, a, be an adult about it. This hasn't worked out. I appreciate your time. I'm never going to speak to you again. <laughs> Maybe you don't like the last part, but I agree with most of that. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> You're actually a terrible Here's person. Here's some ricin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a bit of ricin in there. Uh, that's, okay, that's a fair take. I, I have uh, ended dates early uh, because they have not gone well. So uh, That's cool, I've though. There. But I yeah. appreciate you probably said, let's call it a day rather than just sneaking away, yeah. you know? Yeah, I've made an excuse sense. or something. Uh huh. <laughs> like, oh, I got family. Like your water or burst. Or, My yeah. water burst. How <laughs> much you do it too? Like that, you know? <laughs> That's the old get out. My pipes. Yeah. My pipes are piping right now. My I'm pipes, sorry. My pipes uh, burst. It's gone. All right. <laughs> well, let's hop into the story and see uh, which one of you is correct. So I met a guy online who claimed to be four years older than me. No big deal. I'm 24. We were interested in the same things and got along well, so we decided to meet for drinks last weekend. I went to the bar and was looking for him. Then I saw him, but he looked different. Older. I went over to him and met him and told him that he looked different from his pictures. He said, oh yeah, those pictures are a few years old. I said, but you're 28, right? He responded saying he was actually 42, <laughs> but age is just a number. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Oh. Sean rule. Sean rule. <laughs> <laughs> That's so old. Holy. Um, careful like now. The age difference. Not, not the actual age. I'm gonna say, um, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got the ick, said my phone was in the car and left. He messaged me asking uh, where I was. And I said that I went home and that I'm not into older guys or being lied to. He said that I was shallow and that's why he doesn't say his real age. <laughs> Honestly, I thought the whole thing was funny. So I told my friend, she said I'm mean for leaving a date and not even telling him that maybe he was a nice guy and I'm just being judgmental because of his age. I'm not into older guys that much. People can do what they want, but not for me. So am I wrong for leaving? Uh, I'll take it back. <laughs> <laughs> go, go first. Do I'll it. Take it back. Go off. Go off. <laughs> I think in that situation, she's got every right to leave without telling him because he's, he's essentially catfished her, right? Yeah, he's the same yes. person. It's the same person, but 18 years difference? Why is a 42-year-old setting his age range that low? Come on. That's so red flag. Very for sure. That's so sweet. <laughs> Very yeah. much red flag. That's ridiculous. Yeah. He's yeah. like to her, he doesn't deserve the courtesy of being told to. Not the asshole. Yeah, well, I mean, what, what, else, what, what else can I say besides what Stuart said? That is a red flag. If you start off like a date based on a lie, what what that's the foundation of like a, a, a potential relationship if that's the goal right so yeah uh, she had everywhere in the world if she got the ick and uh this person was obviously capable of lying or not or omission or any of those stuff she had all all the right to leave and yeah it's kind of what Stuart said it's kind of creepy that you're setting your parameters to a certain age range when you're that big age of 42 dating around so yeah not the asshole yeah because i mean like like she said if that's what some people want to do date that much older like that's fine but she's like that's not that's not what i'm into that's not what i thought i was getting into uh, and it's almost a dangerous situation at that point because it's like well he's lied about this what else has he lied about can he lie to exactly yeah you know am i in danger here uh i mean you're 24 uh, alone at a bar with this random guy who's almost double your age uh it's crazy so yeah not the asshole in my in my opinion um your friend's wild for calling you an asshole. <laughs> I'd maybe think of getting a new friend. <laughs> Watch your friend go on a date with him and yeah. see how it goes. <laughs> Introduce them, maybe. <laughs> Jeez. Um, so Reddit deemed not the asshole as well. And Zookeeper Game New 3800 said, she's shallow, but he lied about his age so that he can get the chance at a much younger woman instead of dating age appropriate. Yep. Probably he has very shallow reasons for wanting to date such young women. And age is just a number. Probably doesn't apply to women who are older than him. LOL. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guarantee his age range like anything over thirty. Yeah. 30 is, is like you're too old. Yeah, but it's just yeah. a number, right? Well, I don't know. Unless you're under thirty, no. Come on. 
Yeah. <laughs> every time, every time people say age is just just a number, it screams predatory to me. So uh-huh. I always get in the certain ache situations for sure. I agree with that. In certain situations, well, pertaining to dating. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. I should I should have put that. Yeah, because mm-hmm. there's like some it's like I've heard older people being like, "Oh, age is just a number. You know, you're only old, as old as you feel." And it's like that's uh, a uplifting. That's, that's bullshit. That's okay. That's fine. That's bullshit. <laughs> Context that's of bullshit. us dating. That's bullshit. Those it's true story. I fucking bullshit. feel like crap. Mate, if you're, I'm I'm 35 this year, and I feel old as shit. Damn. Yeah, you know I mean, damn. Thank you. Thank you for that. Damn. <laughs> Thank you. I, damn. I would have never like guessed Kevin you were 35. Hart fucking, what's that thing Kevin Hart does? Don goes, Cheadle? Yeah. Damn. 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 That was too quick, man. That was too quick. Come on. I would have <laughs> never guessed 35, elders. Stuart. You look good for a 35-year-old, you know? I've got a good skincare routine. Almost 35-year-old. Almost. Almost yeah. 30. Sorry. In yeah. summer. In the summer. I'm turning 30 in like a month and a bit, so. Do you find that, though, when people, this is off topic, but when people ask you how old you are, do you tend to find that you tell them when your next birthday is rather than how old you are now? Because I do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm 34. I would Ooh. say I'm 35 in July. For some See, reason. I think it depends <laughs> on why. when. It, uh, Cause like my birthday's in April. So if it's anywhere before April, like between January and April, I'll say when my next birthday is. If it's mm. after April, I'll say that I'm. You maybe know, there's the a age six I month am. cutoff, right? So from July to December, maybe I say I turned 24 in July. Yeah. <laughs> turn the new year over. I'm 35 in July. That's what I think it is too. Yeah. That's it takes like, me like two business days to figure out how old I am sometimes. <laughs> I got a calculator in my head. I'm like, One, how, the fuck, two, how old are you? Three, yeah. 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 It's too much math. How many decades? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to the next story here. Uh, Cross posted by Mary Gitz 2011 again. <laughs> goat. Goat. I haven't upgraded the goat noise. So that's what we get. <laughs> um. This one is titled, Am I the Asshole for Having an Affair After My Wife Told Me to Do So? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I like the, uh, the eye surprise <laughs> there from both of you. <laughs> it's almost the exact same. Wife told uh, you to affair. have... Is this a dude we're talking about here, yeah? I mean, uh, statistically, probably. It, it but, doesn't matter, but I'm just... Yeah. <laughs> for the sake of the story. So if your married partner tells you to have an affair... We need context, don't we? Because they might say that in the midst of an argument. <laughs> because we say stupid shit in arguments. Right. Well, I mean, your wedding vows have got to count for something, right? That's fair. It's, it's affair, mm, is what it is. That's an affair, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm going to uh, go with asshole. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to go opposite Stu again. Oh. I'm going to say not the asshole. This is another. I'm I'm thinking of like all the shit. I'm 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 waiting to like because all the the stories of uh, Reddit stories we read just kind of like mixing it all up. So now I'm thinking this situation. The wife probably has some sort of like illness in a way Mm. where like they can't Mm. they they can't be intimate together or she's like on borrowed time or something like that. And the wife sat down with the husband and said like, "Hey, I can't fulfill certain." you know, needs that you have. And I'm, I'm letting you know that it's okay for you to seek elsewhere. That's kind of my guess in this situation. So for that reason, I'm going not the asshole. The word yeah. affair though implies romance That's true, though. to me. Well, yeah. it could be someone in, in John's case, it could be someone saying like a friend that being they like, had Oh, an affair. you, you yeah. had an affair or whatever. <laughs> Whereas he has an agreement with his wife, I guess is the, Okay. Uh, caveat. That's the word yeah. I'm looking for, Josh. Like they had some sort of agreement. Yeah. Okay. I I like these guesses. These are these are creative. Someone like always it. looks an idiot though at the end. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> no, it's a really cruel I mean, game. <laughs> <laughs> to Honestly, be fair, this is our podcast is all about just guessing shit. Yeah, just, just making each other look stupid. So <laughs> I'm down. I we like don't need it. to try to yeah. do that. To be honest, it's pretty easy for us actually. <laughs> yeah, it's so easy. Uh, all right. Well, let's see uh, who's correct this time. So I, 37 male, have been married to my wife, 38 female, for 12 years and together for 16. We have a beautiful seven-year-old daughter. The problem we had in our relationship was sexual intimacy. It started around the third year of our marriage and we do not have sex anymore. It did not stop all at once, but got less and less over the years to the point where we do not have sex anymore. Many discussions were had on this problem and all I received was, quote, it's no different than a chore for me and quote, you are exaggerating it. 
we both work. And after the birth of our daughter, I took more of a back end, less demanding job to work from home and take care of our daughter together with my wife. I'm the primary caregiver now that she is back to her office work. I do most of the housework, given that I have more time at home. The only time I leave the house is probably for the gym or groceries. At first, that problem in our relationship made me mental. I even started to go to individual therapy since I was diagnosed with dysmorphia and constant re- after constant rejection. I struggled and tried everything to rekindle the intimacy. I thought she wasn't attracted to me, so I started hitting the gym for seven years. I arranged frequent date nights and trips. I did oil massages, foot rubs, and even bought a massage gun. Most of these were not new at all and had uh, always been present in our relationship. She's a great mother and otherwise an amazing wife, but this problem just destroyed me. Two years ago, I broke down in front of her when we were discussing it. She told me, quote, stop bothering me with that and just go fuck someone else. Just make sure you fulfill your duties as a dad. It hurt me a lot at first. It was like she didn't care about me. So what do you guys think of that quote? <laughs> Uh, I'm not the type to like diagnose people, but from my understanding, she sounds asexual. Is that okay. what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like she's she's not into into sex. Fair. And that's that's kind of harsh to hear that from a partner, especially if they they try to do everything to you know individually make themselves better for their partner, and then she's kind of just like, nah, go fuck something else or somebody else type of shit. So. I don't know. That's that's harsh for me. I feel I feel bad for him at the moment. Okay. Yeah. The maths isn't maths in to me at the minute. Okay. <laughs> because he said they've been married for twelve years. Yeah. Together for sixteen. They were shagging for the first three years of the marriage, so that's nine years ago. But the daughter's seven. But they never had sex again after the first three years. Uh, no. So he said it didn't, it didn't stop all at once. It got less and less. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. To, over the years to the point where they don't have it anymore. Right. Okay. okay. So, so they, they probably, you know, wanted a daughter or something like that. So they probably had sex obviously <laughs> in between those times. Uh, but yeah, he said it wasn't immediate. It was okay over the years. It's, it's, uh, cooled off, I guess you could say. Yeah. I don't think she's asexual personally because the first three, oh, the okay. first, the first three years of the marriage was good. Yeah, and I assume the four years before that was also good. I think that if you talk about the seven year itch, right? That's four plus three is seven in my head. Seven years deep together, it's hard to keep the romance alive. Or she's cheating, potentially. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. She Who could knows? Be. Uh, all right. Well, I just want to get your your uh, quotes on that, uh, just to see what you get the, you guys thought. Uh, so it hurt a, uh, a lot at first. It was like she didn't care about me. Last year, I took her up on her suggestion and started seeing a woman in a similar situation. Everything was the same other than meeting up with this woman casually to take care of each other's needs. Last week, my wife told me, quote, you look better. Have you been seeing someone else? And I and laughed. I confirmed that I had and her face fell. She cried a lot in front of me. Seeing her like that destroyed me. If she said stop seeing this woman, I would. It's not worth hurting her. The only reason I did it was because she offered it. She did not talk to me that day and the next day, and it was like she was someone else. She then started wearing lingerie and intimate, uh, initiating sex. I was shocked, but accepted mm. her advances. She keeps looking at me worryingly like she's trying to see uh, my reaction to everything she says and does. I got worried because it's not like her at all. I discovered it's called hysterical bonding, but I have no idea what actions I should take, and I don't even know how long this stage will last. I'm afraid of what will happen later on. I feel like an asshole right now and wanted to get advice. So am I the asshole? Yeah. Mm. You You're going yes, Stuart? Yeah. You are the you asshole. Go, everyone oh. sucks if you wanted to do that too. Oh, dude, you, you're an asshole. Because it doesn't matter how bad it gets, right? If you're married to someone, you need to speak to them. Do couples therapy. I get that you're trying. The fact that she's now trying to get your attention shows that she, she loves him. For whatever reason, the intimacy is gone. If once you have a kid, you fall into this routine of neglecting each other. It's so easy to do. You don't go on dates anymore. You don't have time. The only time you get together might be an hour at the end of the night and you're tired from work and looking after the kid. You're arguing about stuff about the kid this, take them to school. They're going to be late. What they're wearing today. What's today? Is it World Book Day? Do we have to get rid? There's so much to think about when you have a kid. I just think... A good chat could have sorted this out personally. 
Okay. It's not, it's not an excuse to have an affair. Even if in the midst of an argument she says, go fuck someone else, she doesn't mean it. <laughs> He's almost blaming her, which is wrong also. I'm sticking okay. with asshole. I'm sticking with that. I, I'm going to go, actually, uh, everyone sucks here. Uh, I'm going to go with 90, mm, I'd say 70% kind of her, 30% on him. Uh, the reason being for him, for her to say that, like what Stuart's saying, kind of like in the heat of an argument and for him to take it literally without having a continued conversation, say like, Hey, are you serious about this? Like, are, am I okay to like have an affair with someone else and have that conversation once, maybe twice, three times just to make sure. Um, and the fact that he didn't take that and he just went off the bat <laughs> and say like, Oh, I guess it's just a free pass. Cool. But, I can also understand like the frustrations where he's coming from because he did do a lot of work. Like he, he, he does have like um, some things that he needs to sort out. He seeked out therapy. He communicated a bunch of times with her and she kind of just brushed it off for kind of based on the conversation. She, yeah. She did seem to shut him down in a lot of the conversations. A from, lot of times what we could, we've heard. Uh, well, this, yes. is, this is the other problem is that we're, we're only here in one side and every story yeah. has that's two. true with every story. That's another honestly. thing. So, yeah, that's that, that's that's another thing as well. So just based on a context, I say she sucks a little bit more, but he's also not entirely innocent in the situation. So, but is he an asshole, John? Is he an asshole? <laughs> he's an I, asshole for not having a continued conversation. Like just him taking that one time and running away with it. That for me, asshole. Is he an asshole, John? <laughs> Asshole ish. Oh, yeah, cop out. Stuart's <laughs> all of our comments. <laughs> Come on. Is he an asshole? Yes. Uh, I mean, yes, he is an asshole for actually not confirming it. I agree with that. Yes. Uh, I think she is also the asshole for not uh, hearing him that out. This, seeing that this is an issue with their relationship and trying to work on it with him instead mm -hmm. of just shutting him down. So I think, I agree. I think uh, like he should have confirmed that before he because open relationships do happen uh all the ones we hear are, are terrible we've we've had comments being like there are good polyamorous relationships don't think everyone is based off of these reddit stories uh because we all we hear is the bad ones so the, that could have been uh something they talked about and agreed upon and then he could have you know uh met up with a woman and and you know uh, fulfilled his needs or whatever he said uh instead he just took it off of one argument and was like Gonna go take you up on that. Yeah, <laughs> Say less. Like, oh, but, <laughs> okay, that's what I needed. She said it. Can we put that in writing? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Actually, if they put it in writing, this wouldn't be an issue. Uh, but <laughs> it wouldn't be an issue at all. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, here's an uh, here's an asshole that we sort of empathize with. I guess I empathize with them for sure. Uh, Same for sure. Yeah. Uh, I think he 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 was a guy like trying to communicate, trying to work on the relationship, trying to make things more intimate, and. Uh, hitting a, like a, a, a like a, a brick wall basically and so i think yeah again he should have confirmed it but you know you know what i'm gonna go full heel and say he's not the asshole at all anymore oh because if goodness. he did communicate it so many times already and it's just the final straw for him you know what yeah i'm going not the asshole <laughs> fuck it flame me everybody you're the know. asshole man you're well, the asshole That's i can confirm is. one of us will get flamed at least <laughs> Come on. We need we, comments, oh. people. We need comments. <laughs> I'm uh, thinking about the money here. <laughs> John's not here. <laughs> comment yes if John's an asshole. A comment uh, two that's if that, I'm that, an that's asshole. It, that, that's it. Just, just yes <laughs> if John's an asshole. <laughs> uh, so our subreddit was kind of like, it was, it was a bit torn. Most people were saying, you know, uh, need more information was kind of what it was. Like, I agree. Absolutely. Confirm, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And so... Uh, confused at six, three said time to go back to therapy and take your wife with you. Uh, she didn't believe you were serious and now she's freaking out. You're right to wonder how long this will last and what fallout will be. Don't give her the option to not attend therapy with you because this is going to get much more complicated with time. Good luck. And I think that didn't give like a, you know, asshole or anything compliment. That was just a good advice for OP. Uh, go to couples therapy and, and throw yeah, this shit out. Definitely. This will blow up in your face if you don't, uh, you know, take it head on. All right, boys. Uh, I don't know who was right in that last one. We will find out when the episode <laughs> releases. <laughs> All I'm going to see in the comments, two, 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 two. two. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, I damn think, you, Stuart. <laughs> I think that one's a gray area one. 
Uh, I it think was. that's just, uh, you know, it's how you take that one, to, uh, how you're going to feel about it. But uh, next one, we got cross posted by another goat, <laughs> Z Mitch 8. Nice. And the title for this one is Am I the Asshole for Calling My Wife a Vindictive Bitch for Refusing <laughs> to Do Anything for My Kids, even though they told her to stop trying to pretend she's their mom? Mm. Oh, no. The kids stop trying, <laughs> they're pretending that she's not their mom. Yes. <laughs> That's hard because vindictive <laughs> bitch. Yeah, is, calling it, anyone a vindictive bitch quite, is a tough one to get yeah, over. <laughs> it's, it's quite a heavy statement, that, isn't it? But, I'm gonna go not the asshole. For someone to call someone a vindictive bitch, that means they the other person must have done something really terrible for them to react a certain way. So I think the mother wasn't involved at all, like when the kids growing up, because it sounds like the kids kind of don't fuck with her anyways either so i'm gonna go not the asshole for this one all right then asshole <laughs> here's my this thing is the show the here's, my, show. Show. Yeah. here's my thing I'm, I'm purely doing this out of spite i, I love I, it i'm going down the route of the the person saying it has been gaslighting the kids <laughs> Ooh. into Ooh. disowning Ooh, their own I like mom. That. That's what I'm uh, going That is for. a juicy one. I'm going for <laughs> okay. that. Saying, calling someone a vindictive bitch is asshole behavior anyway. Um, wait, that's, the, that's the route I'm crossing All my right. fingers. This, this, also this, this is the difference when Sean's not here. The Browns are not united. It's the whites <laughs> versus the Browns always bickering. <laughs> I like the different I love it. <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> I love chaos. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's hop into it. So I met Anne two years after my first wife, Susan, died. We have been married for 10 years now. I have two daughters with Susan, uh, Molly, 14 years old, and Rose, 16 years old. Anne and I have two sons, Tom, five years old, and Paul, two years old. God, that's a lot of... That is some numbers. You don't have to track, keep track of their ages or anything. Because cool, I, I, really. I forgot. I forgot. It. Like, I zoned out immediately. I didn't take my pills today. So I was like, I'll to be fair, the, the sons are on. barely in this story. So you don't even have to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to. Um, Anne used to be really involved with helping keep Susan's memory alive and accepted her place in the girls' lives. But after she got pregnant with Tom, she started to push her role as a mom onto the girls, which caused many fights between Susan's family and brackets and me. She stopped celebrating Susan on Mother's Day and Christmas, even refused to attend what would have been Susan's 40th birthday at my in-law's house. Anne has been a great mom to my girls over the years, and she's been very hands-on with everything, like helping them with school, hobbies, and having celebrations slash holidays planned months in advance. My oldest daughter, Rose, got pregnant four months ago, which she's 16. So, you know. <laughs> Damn. It's yeah. like an MTV show. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm trying my best to keep on this because there's so many <laughs> me too, different things to going on. Oh. Everyone's pregnant, kids. Yeah. <laughs> my brain. I think uh, I've yeah. got my it. Brain. I think I've got Rose it. Rose is the oldest. She's 16. She, she's pregnant okay. for four From months. From Suze. Yeah. Okay. You know. Uh, All right. And the father isn't in the picture, so Anne has been doing everything to help plan for the baby. I thought their relationship was becoming much more strong, uh, and she had Anne plan her gender reveal and baby shower. But two weeks ago, Susan's mother and sister came to visit. They were having a conversation and my mother-in-law brought up how hard it must be on Rose to be alone on the, in this without her mother, especially during her first pregnancy, and it breaks her heart that she had to grow up without a mother. Anne then smashed Ooh. a plate on the ground, which shocked everyone into silence and said, quote, what about me? I've been there every step of the way. Me, not you. Me, she has a mother that takes great care of her. Not you, not me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hermione. Took me a second. Yeah, I, I think I quoted it wrong, but you get the gist. Um, Molly screamed at Anne to not speak to her grandmother like that, and she wasn't their mother, just their dad's wife, so she needs to stay in her lane. Ooh. A crying Rose said that she wished it was Anne dead instead of her mom, and she's sick of pretending like she's her mom so she can stop pretending to be their mom. Teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> Anne said quote okay fair enough I'll stop playing mom from now on I'll just focus on the kids I gave birth to Anne left the house for a few hours and when she came home she just checked on the boys who were in bed and went to sleep ignoring me we had a conversation the next morning I suggested the family counseling and everyone apologized for hurtful things they said to each other 
She said there was no need and she was making breakfast to wake up her kids. When I got the boys ready and woke the girls up, we went downstairs for breakfast and I noticed Anne didn't make any breakfast for Molly and Rose. She then sat down, started talking to me about grocery shopping later and asked if I needed anything. And then she said no when the girls told her what they needed. It's been like this for two weeks. She won't do anything for the girls or even speak to them unless she has to and treats them like roommates. I've tried to speak to her about it multiple times and tried to have a family discussion about what happened because the girls are extremely sorry, but Anne will simply say she's giving them the relationship they asked for. Today was meant to be Rose's gender reveal, but Anne canceled everything she had planned and failed to mention it to Rose till two days ago so she couldn't plan a decent party in time. Mm. Anne didn't even attend. She went to see her parents, which really hurt Rose. I was so angry at Anne, the moment she came home, I lost it at her. I called her a vindictive bitch and that I'm sick of her acting like a child and that she was a 42-year-old playing mind games with teenagers and if she kept it up, we'd be getting a divorce. She, she gave me back her wedding ring, packed her bags and, and our sons and left. I've tried said to call- peace out. <laughs> <laughs> she said bet. <laughs> uh, I've tried to call her, but she won't answer. Both my girls haven't left the rooms crying, blaming themselves for what happened. So am I the asshole? Oh, God, this is tricky as hell. I'll go, mate, while you're thinking. The asshole is the fucking grandma or whoever that came and started all this shit. Because, (laughs) for real, did you say the the girls are what, 16 and... and 14. 14. 14. So, yeah, teenage girls. I think Anne has a right to be pissed off because she's been there. Yeah. it, it It can't be easy to step in, not only with someone who has kids with someone else and they're still in the picture, but when they've died, you're always going to be compared to that person. I think after a couple of days, Anne should have stopped being a child. Petty. Yeah. Pet is the word, John, yeah. She should have just sucked it up. They're sorry. Everyone seems to be sorry apart from Anne, and she's like, well, this is what you wanted. But that, that's, that's how a teenager should act. So I don't think he's the ass. He probably shouldn't have requested a divorce. I think that's a bit savage. She's obviously <laughs> taken it really, really poorly, and you need to try and bring her back to the inner circle, or however you want to word it. But everyone is being a bit of an arsehole, I think. Okay, I I agree. I think Stuart like summed it up perfectly. And the root cause of all this is the grandma. Like the grandma came in, was like, "What can I do to stir shit up today?" And <laughs> she absolutely did. Uh, you know, like Anne seemed like she was trying. And that, you know, planning a party, like uh, trying to make sure that uh, Rose kind of had someone to guide her during like her her first pregnancy. That is tough enough as it is as a 16 year old to be dealing with that. Um, You know, and and it's kind of sad that they uh, the kids dismissed her efforts like as trying to be not necessarily a mom, but at least like a a maternal figure, at least uh, to them and helping them along the way. So. But at the same time, like, it's hard for teenagers to blame sometimes because, you know, the death of a mom is kind of hard and like they act out a certain way. You don't know how they how they are, how they get during those times. But the husband also reacted negatively too, like for him to like immediately call divorce, which I get because he's probably looking out for the interests of his children, too. But you also have kids with with Anne. So I don't know. I agree with Stuart. Everyone kind of sucks in this. I think this he could have he could have backed up Anne more. I think. I think so too. Yeah, like no one acted like an adult here. Yeah. This is where it brings me because I disagree with both of you. I think really? everyone except for Anne sucks. Hmm. <laughs> I think the okay. OP sucks ass, dude. He <laughs> really. You know your your daughters talk to your wife, telling her she wants like they want her dead. Like they wish death upon her and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Literally though. And he didn't the intervene kids. at all, dude. He didn't intervene at all. He just like, uh, no, you just gotta, you know, uh, apologize to them and, and grow up uh, or I'll give you a divorce. Like he didn't try to <laughs> actually fix the issue. Uh, he didn't stick up for her when, when the mother-in-law was there. He's a piece of shit and a, just a rollover. Uh, <laughs> and then on top I agree of that, with to that. be like, you're, you're the vindictive bitch is fucking insane uh dude uh, i mean this is probably the best case scenario she her leaving uh because it doesn't sound like you made an effort to integrate her into the family 
I, I personally, this is this is where I'm coming from. I think. Nah, uh, I, I mean, the mother-in-law <laughs> obviously sucks. <laughs> the, the, it sounds like Susan's family sucks ass, and that's why Anne doesn't want oh, yeah. anything to do with them. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. And then, yeah, like I don't know, plan your own daughter's fucking baby shower. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, she doesn't if, sound too involved. If they don't view her as your as her as their mom, fucking do, do it yourself. Then they you're do, their dad. Though. They do view her as their <laughs> I, step stepmom, right? Yeah, you know, someone wishes death upon me. They don't wish you. death upon her, man. The kids, they say <laughs> stupid shit. Your kids. Sure, but that can you, still hurt. Your, Words yeah, still yeah, hurt. of course it can. Yeah, of course it can. But this is where you have to use your matureness and, and show that you were an adult. Right. G- Jesus. I think her walking away from the situation is being an adult. Yeah, I think she doesn't is, want yeah, to be but, part of this family anymore. No, but the whole I, I like grocery thing where like they won't even pick up anything that's for petty. like the household, that's, that's a little petty. It that's where petty. We're, I think that's where we're coming from. If she did that yeah. for like three days, I get that. But if she does if she does that for two Months? weeks, man, you just be Oh, is it two weeks? Yeah. You're just being silly at that point. Well maybe this is just maybe I'm a vindictive bee because I stand with Anne. <laughs> It's not worth splitting up a, a, a family. Anne is definitely. I think Anne and the kids are definitely like the lowest in a totem pole in this in this scenario. It's the it's the husband and the fucking grandmother to me that's the main villain. Man, the OP needs to go on Amazon and order a spine because he is spineless. True. You know that's, what? I don't think we've talked about is. Paul and Tom enough. Those two assholes. What were they doing this whole time? Man, what the fuck was Paul and Tom doing? I don't even. Know, I don't even remember that. Come on, lads. <laughs> Background uh, characters, <laughs> piece of shit. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he Kids, deleted man. his entire account, so uh, we couldn't even see whether he got deemed asshole. Uh, so that'll be up to well, the comment he, yeah. section again. Um, we'll see. I had one comment. It, you know, as, with my own bias, it backs up my bias. So I'll read it just to uh, give a little bit more context into what I'm saying. So. Abyssal Kitten says, wow, called Anne a bitch, threatened divorce, and then is surprised that Anne gave the ring back and walked out. Uh, maybe you shouldn't throw insults and make threats that you don't actually want to happen. You threatened divorce, she took the exit you gave her, and she sprinted through that shit. Gotta love the <laughs> checks, notes, consequences of your acts and kicking in, don't you? Uh, <laughs> also, not the girl's fault she left you. It was your job to parent them the second they said those god-awful things to Anne. But That's Anne is true. an adult and they're just teenagers, so I, uh, so they don't know any better, right? The same teenagers that's going to have a baby soon. Uh, yeah, this is that's a shit show. For Anne. I'd have left to fuck that <sighs> shit. So. Does, does no one talk things to... Do, does everyone just take <laughs> arguments at face value these days? Are we that fucking stupid? <laughs> if you well, have an, I mean, yeah. Let's say you have to have an <laughs> argument off air, right, about something where the show's going. And you'll say, fuck off, you selfish prick. <laughs> does that mean you're going to quit Reddit on Wiki forever? Does it fuck? Get a grip. Uh, depends what it is, I guess. <laughs> oh, best, best on you, Josh, you'd probably call it quits. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> see, see, my thing is, dude, I think there's more bubbling beneath the surface. Because as you said in our last story, all we're getting is one side. Of course. Surface I think, level. Yeah. I think this is a, a, a tendency that uh, Susan's family has. Uh, it's been, know, it won't been be the first time it's shitting happened. Shitting on her. And so I True. think it's just built up to this point where Anne said, fine, fuck it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's where I, 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 I'm seeing it past the story, I guess, is what I'm, I'm trying to say. I think there's more buildup and he hasn't ad- like they haven't addressed anything. And so it's just come to this, you know, where she's just like, fuck it. I'm out. I don't want to be a part of this anymore. And I think that's fine. You can want to walk out of that relationship if you don't, if you're not happy with it. Uh, yeah, I guess you could call her an asshole if you want for being petty, but yep. I don't know. I think it was just a boiling point for, for me. And so I, I stand Anne. That's where I stand. Oh, oh man. Mars. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that, it's that Canadian in him. He got that Drake in him, real quick. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a nice Canadian, eh? <laughs> Fuck those kids. <laughs> uh, we'll find out who's right in the comments later on. It yeah, we'll see. Now. <laughs> comment two if you think me and Stuart are assholes in that. Yeah. Time. Comment eight or no six. Oh, six. Let's do another for, for number Toronto. this time, man. <laughs> it's getting confusing. <laughs> Six God, baby. Yeah, six God. Uh, all right. So next one, <laughs> cross posted by both concerned, elegant eight zero six six, and I got a shout out barefoot Conrosa who really wanted me to cover this one. Uh, they take me with on it on Discord, which I am terrible at answering on there, but I saw this one. So uh, <laughs> this one is titled "Am I the asshole for having a son with my late boyfriend's son?" Hang on, <laughs> let me work this out. Wait, wait, a son. <laughs> 
a Put son your with, you, so you, you had a boyfriend that who, who had, had a kid. Who had, I mean, it's not her son, right? The one uh, she's having the kid with. Presumably not. Uh, I think it would have been phrased differently, but because incest is an automatic asshole tick, right? <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, your True. your your late boyfriend's son implies that it's her son. I'm assuming it's not. Yeah, it it could be from a previous relationship. You know what I mean? And uh, that's what we're hoping for. <laughs> I don't think it makes. There's got to be a big ass age gap with this. Oh yeah, that's oh dude, yeah. It, I don't think it makes you an asshole. It makes you fucking weird. <laughs> What's the difference? You know, <laughs> that's what he has to do when, when we're in the bedroom. <laughs> Predatory, <laughs> predatory asshole. Oh, okay, am I better than uh, my dad? <laughs> oh no, we had a Who's story. Who's bigger? Where, uh, <laughs> was it a sister? Was asking comparisons because they slept with yeah. one sister's boyfriend. That's uh, right. Oh my god! Yeah. Like, which one looks? Uh, which one looks better? Yeah, gross. Mm. All right, let's hop into this one. Uh, thanks to. Everyone who wanted me to see this one and read it for you guys. <laughs> uh, story gets to all the pleasure. <laughs> yeah. This weird ass story. This weird story. <laughs> all right. So my boyfriend unfortunately passed away before we were able to have any children. He did, however, have children with his wife. I've never met his children until after he passed, but I did know his wife very well, if you know what I mean. No. I, oh, wait. I don't. I don't. <laughs> Is this like a swinger swinging? They do not go into more detail situation. with that part, but <laughs> and they, they didn't. I they also didn't mean. discuss what their age was. So uh, no, that's no probably. Ages. Um. <sighs> so wait, the next paragraph. Uh, I currently have eleven children with a few different fathers. I pretty much only see them at parties or when I ha- they come to my celebrity events. Well, I recently got a fertility massage from a guy named Alexander. I ended up inviting him over later and we hit it off right away. And later on, the pregnancy came back, uh, pregnancy test came back positive. I don't feel that bad seeing as his dad passed away a long time ago and I never knew Alex before this and we're both adults. I plan on letting, (laughs) I plan on letting Alexander and his family raise the baby after it's born, just like all my other fathers of my children do. Um, His mom seems kind of upset. So I got to wonder, am I the asshole? <laughs> is there such a thing called as a deadbeat mom? <laughs> she's like a surrogate. <laughs> she's basically a surrogate. You're right, actually. Uh, what the fuck did I just hear? <laughs> How old is this woman? Is my question. She is we fertile as find fuck. Out. Fertile yeah, as fuck. Eleven? 11? That's crazy. When did you start? That's what I want to know. That's fine. Wrap it up. Nuts. Why she gotta say it like that? I knew her. I knew his wife. If you know what I mean. What the fuck does that mean, bro? They were intimate. <laughs> is what oh. I got from that. We need some uh, urges on this thing. So yeah, Alexander's dad died a long time ago too. So that makes yeah. me think that when he died, Alexander was like oh, probably a, like a teenager a, yeah, at most, a, a child. Yeah. How old is this woman? <laughs> If that's, I mean, think if about that's her it. eleventh yeah. kid, though. Yeah, if she has hmm. eleven kids, and like, if there's a, you know, there's probably like a year or two gap in between yeah. each kid. I'd say forties. I'd say in her forties, popping them out though. for her to be. F- yeah, to d- that's crazy. I wonder I how many asshole, asshole. asshole yeah, I'm, just, I'm saying asshole. I'm <laughs> saying a that. predatory asshole too. She, she's right. an irresponsible asshole. Yep. Yeah, that's true too. Uh, and to just pass this. it off, be like, yeah, take take care. Uh, yeah, you can have the kid. Like, yeah. I don't want nothing to do with it. I just pop him out. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Here you go. All right. <laughs> what what does she mean by like? Is she a celebrity? She says she she. I only see my kids during celebrity, celebrity events. Parties. Yeah, parties. must be. Must be. Is that an orgy? Maybe she knows Nick Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it is nick cannon maybe <laughs> that's so funny uh, so i gotta i gotta come clean with you guys so it's ai story was cross posted from r slash am i the asshole sims so the game the sims <laughs> uh, you bastard okay okay you bastard i was like uh, ain't no fucking way that's yeah a so it was a, for those who don't know the sims is a video game we talked about it actually not too long ago were uh, you guys yeah. alive when the first Sims came out? When was that? Was it 99? I'm looking now. The Sims. It was, it was 97. 90s. 2000. 2000. Oh yeah, 2000. 2000? Shit. 
Yeah. Oh shit, I was still in the Philippines. I still didn't know how to speak English. <laughs> That's an OG game, by the way. Sims yeah, 1. Good. Uh, I think I played two, maybe. Recent? Two or three. Oh. One of those ones I played quite a bit. I still have, I have, I have like Sims 4 on every single <laughs> computer I have at home, which is insane. <laughs> nice. Uh, so it's hilarious that you said Nick Cannon because the comment I picked out was from affectionate lower score top <laughs> 5749. I a thousand percent this was making fun of Nick Cannon until I saw slide two. <laughs> yeah, well, he is wilding out too much. Yeah, actually, that is his life, to be honest. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> so. I was going to have an army right, before uh, long. Let's do a real one here. Uh, Cross posted by Z Mitch 8. That <laughs> fucked me up, Josh. I know, I know. It was funny to watch your <laughs> brains breaking over that story. <laughs> <laughs> it's we're just like, ain't no way. How, How does, does this, this make woman? sense? <laughs> <laughs> She's uh, actually only an hour old in video game. <laughs> uh, so title for this one is, Am I Wrong for Sleeping with Someone Who's on a Break from Their Girlfriend? Ooh, this is like a friend's like Ross or what? Friends question. <laughs> we were she on slept a break. With Ross. <laughs> Let's talk about Ross for a second. Was was Ross in the right or was Ross in the in the wrong? Uh, Ross was in the wrong many times on that show. Yes. But in the, in think, the, was he on a break? Was he justified in, in sleeping with the the woman from the photocopier place? I believe him and uh, Rachel I honestly well. said she said I need to. I can't remember how she worded it, but we need to go on a break or whatever. And he, I think this goes back to story two, where it's like you should confirm that, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. Confirm <laughs> what, what are what's the statutes of limitations of our relationships at the moment? Yeah. Are we actually on a break, or is this just an argument? You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. So this story uh, is: I, I was on a break from my partner, and I slept. With no, someone. no. Uh, they slept with someone who was on a break from their girlfriend. Is what oh, mm. okay. So the 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 OP is single. I'm assuming it doesn't say that, but. You can probably assume because they don't probably they, okay. they have a well. Assuming they're single and assuming the break was official and signed and sealed by both parties, <laughs> not the asshole. I'm gonna agree with Stuart here. I have a feeling that the person who was on a break didn't tell this OP who was mm. single who could have done whatever they wanted. So I think so. Not the asshole. Uh, yeah, because if you don't know, then it's definitely not your fault. <laughs> yeah, how, how the hell are you supposed to know? Yeah, I'm not a mind reader. God damn it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. All right, you're on the same page for this one. Hell yeah. Let's hop into it. I, 21 female, have been friends with a guy from work, 24 male, for a few months now. The whole time I've known him, he has been with his long term girlfriend. Me and him and a few other people from work were going out, uh, but everyone ended up canceling as it got closer to the day. I came to his flat as we were drinking there before going out. We ended up drinking a lot. When we went out, none of the clubs let us in. So we went back to his place and got more drinks. He has a two bedroom in his flat, one of which is unused and he's waiting for a new roommate. But I said I wanted to sleep with him in his bed because it looked comfier and he had a TV in there. <laughs> oh, hold up. Damn, we're, I, I feel like we're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> were they on a break? That's the question. <laughs> uh, I genuinely had no sexual intentions. We ended up cuddling all night, but didn't kiss or touch or do anything beyond that. But I mean, you did touch cuddling. Yeah. (laughs) Also, yeah, I I call bullshit on that too. Yeah. And the intention of you wanting to sleep in the room, knowing that there's two rooms available. Yes. Why are they going out just on their own anyway? Yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. It's supposed to be a work still. We've all canceled. Well, do you and me just want to (laughs) go? There's a tension there already. Yeah, is the feeling I get. (laughs) And she's known the whole time. That he's been with someone for a long term. So, and the Correct. fact that you still wanted to cuddle, sleep in the same bed, it is premeditated, my brothers. Yes. Although, in, in defense, they were both hammered because they didn't even get let into any clubs. Uh, <laughs> Not that it justifies anything, but let's, let's put it into context here. Right. They could be just making dumb decisions instead of yep. uh, mm-hmm. planned out decisions, potentially. Okay. Mm-hmm. The next day, we definitely had a much higher sort of sexual tension than we had before. Oh, so there's no excuse now. <laughs> They're sobered up now. <laughs> that, that was on account of all the sex we had last night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we watched TV in his bed, spooning. Then we napped. And while we're falling asleep, I have my head buried in his chest and I'm rubbing his chest. And he is like rubbing my lower back. 
When we wake up, I'm supposed to go home, but we end up drinking all day to the point where I get really fucked up, end up throwing up, and he cleans me up, puts me in sp- the spare bed, then goes to sleep in his own room. <laughs> I wake up around <laughs> 3 a.m. and That's go into awesome. his bed with him. At this point, I'm completely sober. <laughs> Just mm. hung over. Uh, and while we're cuddling, we start getting a bit touchy. One thing leads to another, and we end up having sex. Then we go to bed. Today I woke up and he's completely normal and acted as if nothing happened other than him asking me if I'm on any contraceptions. What are we now? Unprotected (laughs) sex. Raw dog in. When I tell... (laughs) 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 Uh, When I tell him no, he says go get the morning after pill today then. Other than that, we don't talk about it or act any differently than as we were still just friends. Now, I have always been attracted to him and I feel like he has always been to me too. And we do have Fucking a bit of a flirty it. friendship. Mm, mm, but we've mm. always just been platonic other than that for like the two hours we weren't last night. I am seeing someone that we aren't officially together. And like I said, he has always had a girlfriend since I've known him. About an hour ago, I asked my best friend, who we also work with, if she would pick me up, drive me to get the pill. When she realizes she's picking me up from his flat, she first asks why I'm at his place still, as we were only supposed to go for the night uh, before, and I was supposed to go home that night. I tell her the full story that I've written here, and she says, you can't be serious. He has a girlfriend, and you're seeing blank, and it's his birthday today. (laughs) Oh, it's the the guy she's She's seeing's seeing's birthday? birthday. (laughs) Happy birthday. Happy birthday. (sighs) I slept with someone else. Um, Yeah. She got plan B and did it with a plan B person. Yeah. I mean, maybe she got him some dessert, like a cream pie. <laughs> Blow your candle. Cut <laughs> uh, that, Stuart. Nice one. I appreciate that. That was good. Uh, I told her that she knows that the guy is on a break from his girlfriend and that she knows I'm not actually officially with the guy I'm seeing. She says that's just an ex- a shitty excuse for being a shitty person. And that we know what we did isn't fair and is wrong. I said, if we're both technically single, then I don't get the big deal. She asks, either of us are going to tell the people we're seeing. And I say, I doubt it. She tells me, why not if it's not a big deal? And I say, it's not really anyone's business. And that it was a one-time thing. So it's not that deep. So you posted on Reddit. And also told their coworker. (laughs) And her coworker, yeah. Immediately. (laughs) You dumb bitch. She then started saying how our friendship has always been sus and how if her boyfriend did this, she'd hate him regardless of if they were on a break. She also says she doesn't believe me when I say it was just a one-time thing, but I explained nothing has changed between us this morning and he was normal with me. She kept going on and on about how she's disappointed me and I ended up telling her to just shut up, that, it's, that she's not my mom and it's not her business. If I knew she was going to give me a lecture, I'd have just got a bus. She then said, You should have done that. <laughs> you should have. Then it would be no one's business because you wouldn't tell anyone. Uh, she then said, I just didn't think you were that sort of girl, but I've made my point. The rest of the trip was just awkward. And now I'm back home wondering if I did, uh, if the thing I did was actually shitty or if she's being dramatic. So am I wrong? Yes. Let's just <laughs> rewind a little bit because she said, We've just been friends and friends and friends apart from the two hours. We weren't last yeah. night. <laughs> Two hours, bro? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Who is this guy? In Superman. He's a guy. No, I got like 10 <laughs> minutes on my best day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying. That is longer. Just wasted time. But yeah, I think like, that's damn. the part Stu took out of the story. That's, that's what I'm still hung up on that. Two hours. God He's damn. like, I didn't even hear the rest. I know. Tell me again. Outlook calendar <laughs> is full. I can't fit enough time. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, <laughs> I gotta leave, guys. Um, yeah, I think asshole, hundred percent. Oh man, what a horrible, horrible, Dude, big time, horrible post. Yeah, not not only like because yeah, it does sound like their friendship was pretty slash. She's like, we were just friends. Oh, but we flirted a lot, and like I, I've mm. always been into him. I think he's always been into me. So you had ulterior motives going into this, very much so. Also, she didn't drop that he was on a break until she was talking with her friends. So. Yeah, I don't know how much of a break they actually were on, yeah. to be honest. I think it's cool how when she threw up, they made her sleep in the spare bed. 
<laughs> I thought they were laughing about it. I want nothing to do with that. And then she went into his bed. Yeah. Yep. I'm saying. She was probably, I have a feeling that she was the one that was telling her other coworkers, like, hey, we're, don't show up anymore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are the night's off, so guys. It's cancelled. Yeah. yeah, it's cancelled. She didn't tell him. She, she went to his house and she was like, I can't believe that no one's come. They're not here oh, anymore. Should we oh, just, well, should just, we just party? Should we just party? <laughs> mm-hmm. Paying off the bouncers not to let them in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, don't let us um, in. Yeah, all all of that asshole, but also like, she's like, I'm not going to tell the partner that I'm with that I had unprotected sex with another person is yeah, potentially exposing them up. to, you know, STDs and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, Who knows what else? That's not very nice, is it? No. <clears throat> Reddit deemed asshole. And Bunny Crush said, quote, it's not really anyone's business. Uh, and then they say that argument might, might hold water. Except OP had her friend pick her up directly from the booty call <laughs> at a location she'd recognize True. specifically to get plan B. All, all of these people are not only friends, but also co-workers. OP could literally not wait to tell her best friend about it. And she's just upset that her friend gave it to her straight. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's a real friend right there to give him straight, even though it's a, yeah. a tough conversation. All of your it's friends would need it. Yep. They'll be honest with you. They'll be honest. Your friends. Yeah. hundred percent. Uh, all right, we got one last one. It's a shorter one here. Posted on Am I the Asshole by Southern, lower score Sunday, lower score 7993. And the title is Am I the Asshole for Reuniting with My Dying Ex-Girlfriend? Uh, reuniting. <clears throat> Reunited. And it and feels, feels so good. So good. Um, uh, we just got copyright claimed. This go- Sorry. <laughs> There's got to be... <laughs> some kind of either sympathy angle here or monetary angle. You know, maybe I'll I'm get with her. her, with her so, get her <laughs> yeah. so I'll get in the wheel, baby. I don't know. I think that's pretty weird. Like, oh, by the way, I'm dying. Yeah. Oh, sh- let's get back to Shall I move back in? <laughs> if you would, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm also negative about this situation so yeah i, 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 I don't go if we have to commit either way i'm gonna go asshole but i'm on the fence with it i want to know more I, I, i'm surprised uh stewart didn't go like oh yeah it's uh it's gonna be like one of those um <laughs> insurance claim it's very much so happens all the time in true crime we, we could have a gold oh, yeah. digger on our hands here we could have <laughs> could have anything could be anything. Let's get married right away. Yeah. Just before you die, so I can inherit I'll everything. Get back together with you, but tell me about that estate that your family owns. <laughs> Should we get married? <laughs> I like that. Uh so you're both saying asshole. Yes. Yeah. Watch the shit be wholesome as hell. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like it went to it went it went to the army or something and they split up <laughs> for, for the sake of their own mental health. Then he comes back two years later and she's dying and they get back together. We we'll, we'll just look like horrible people. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are awful. Uh, comment nine if you think Stuart and I are horrible people. Yeah. There's going to be so many numbers in the comments now. We're not going to forget how to decipher them. Uh, all right. So I, 36 male, am married to a beautiful woman, 35 female, with whom I've been together for 15 years. Okay. She has gave birth to our sons two months ago. In total, we have two biological children, 13 female uh, and zero male, and one adopted child, six male, together. We are currently looking after two foster children, 14 male and nine female. It's a lot of kids. That is a lot of kids. It's not, ele- it's not 11, but it's a lot. The first thing I picked up on uh, when I was like this, I was like, my ex 15 years ago. I don't give a fuck about. It. I don't. I don't care about who they are. You know what I mean. Uh, so that's that. That was a red flag for me right off the bat. Uh, I don't know if it was for you, you guys, but you uh, you you still crushing on your middle school love or something like that's that? What God damn. Uh, anyway, when I was eleven, my best friend was a girl I met in boarding school. I was shy, sensitive kid who had an adverse home life and didn't get along well with my classmates. So she was the first friend I ever made. I had a crush on her for a few years, and we even briefly dated when we were 15, but we never considered it anything serious. Because it wasn't. (laughs) It was middle school. We were 15. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> Throughout high school, we were inseparable, but after graduating, I got accepted into college in the US and had to move away. We promised to keep in contact, but I ended up drifting apart and losing touch. Recently, she messaged me out of the blue and told me she had terminal leukemia and only had a few months to live. She wants to reconnect with me and I and suggested I come visit her. Oh, and I suggested I come visit her in her last months of life. When I brought this up with my wife, she was very opposed to the idea and told me I was acting impulsively. She didn't want me visiting an ex-girlfriend while she's stuck at home with the kids. I understand she has a lot going on with the kids and the new baby, but I have, uh, I have forever to make it up to her, whereas I only have a few months to reunite with someone who was at one point the most important person in my life. So am I the asshole? Yeah. Oof. <laughs> I'm going to abandon my new my 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 wife with our new baby <laughs> I've, I've only got three months to make up with this person i knew 25 years ago so and who i haven't seen and like lost contact with forever yeah if she was FaceTime. that important if she was that important yeah. you wouldn't have lost contact you know what i mean yeah exactly you didn't want to see him for the last 20 years what's up with yeah. this, sound, this sounds horrible why does he give a fuck that she's dying <laughs> Stuart, Stuart is so nice. He's cold with it. I like this shit. Coming up with the heat. Well, some guy I've never met dying right now. I don't give a fuck. I don't know him. That's, uh, yeah, other than like, oh, a, a human being is dying. Yeah, I obviously, don't that's terrible. Like, oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Dude, yeah. There's, a, there's a tracker online that tells you the world's population, and it's, it's just p- perpetually plus oh, one, God. plus one, plus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, up and down, deaths, this, deaths today and births today, and it's perpetually going like this. That sounds up, like an ext- 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 existential <laughs> crisis waiting to happen, just staring. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't recommend uh, it. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's insane of him to be like, oh, I'm going to abandon my wife with our six children that we're watching. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Crazy. She Some just of whom you've baby. adopted, by the way, who've already yeah. been abandoned. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, you dad's know? abandoning us. Fuck piece of shit. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, absolutely insane of him to do that. Yeah, and it's it's wild that he's the one that says he's the one that suggested, oh, I should meet you up. He's yeah. like, dude, you need to consult you need to consult like your home situation first, see if there's logistically if this even makes sense. And again, I brought up earlier, if you really want to reconnect, technology exists. Hell, yeah. go on FaceTime, go talk to each other for like six hours. But at least be at home so you can help out your your partner, like take care of all those kids. But yeah, but man, you, you know when you, when you go out and you're drunk and you, we should start a business, you and me. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go through the the minute details and everything. This is going to be. Oh, you wake up next day and you think, what the fuck was I talking about? <laughs> That's the night? stupidest thing <laughs> I've ever come up stupid. with. Stupid. <laughs> this doesn't make sense logistically, financially. He's just like <laughs> impulsively. I'll come see you. Mm-hmm. And then he slept on it, and he still thinks that. That's, that's He's weird. like, this is genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a lifetime to make it up to my wife and kids, you know. My kids just that's been wild. born, but you know, yeah. she's going to die in three months. I know yeah. I've not seen her since I was 11, but it's important. Yeah, it's important to me. She used to be the most important person in my life. Yeah. When Who's I was the most ch- important person <laughs> in your life now? <laughs> right now. You don't understand. Let me tell you, when I was a kid, <laughs> she was there for me, man. You don't get it. You and your six kids. She means everything to me. That's why I haven't talked to her for 10 years. <laughs> She's the one that got away. Come on. Probably. Oh, no, I mean, honestly, I, I'm saying, yeah. What kind of reconnection can't you do over the phone or yeah, mm-hmm. video chat or anything? Like what? All that. It's a red flag to me that you have to be there in person. I get that she's an important. She used to be an important person in your life. Sure. I have used empathy to be. for that. Used to uh, be. You could be sad that she's going to like pass away, you know, pass yeah. away. Uh, but you have responsibilities as a father and a husband and you can't just abandon them for someone you haven't talked to in so many years. And, and, and to throw that back to him, like he had a lifetime to stay connected with her and yeah. he didn't, they just yeah. let it pass through. 100%. Let's compare it to furniture. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's do that. A bit, a bit left field. To furniture. Let's a bit left field. <laughs> this is a left field. You analogy. sit on each other's, I'm, sure. I'm intrigued. I'm that intrigued, too. Stuart. I'm listening, Stuart. <laughs> Let's say you live somewhere 10 years ago and you have the best, the best couch ever. The best couch. Okay. It's the best couch ever. Limited edition couch. No one sells it anymore. For whatever reason, that relationship ends. You move on. You get another couch. Someone says to you in 20 years, do you remember that couch that you loved so much? 
Uh, <laughs> it's going to be incinerated uh, in two months. We, d- we just thought we'd let you know if you want to see a picture of it. Or <laughs> no, I want to go sit on it again. <laughs> And your couch is at home with its baby seats. And your couch is there. It's got your kids on it. The pillows. It's, it's doing its best, man. It's stained. The pillows need fluffing. It's doing its best. It's been there for five years, man. It's there. And you want to go see that old couch. Fuck you, you piece of and shit. sit on it again. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, now I can, I'm just seeing couch now. I guess I was really imagining that story. So thank you for that vision. I was picturing that too. I mean, that couch, I mean, that guy is an asshole, man. What a prick. Yeah. Is he a person sitting on couches in this scenario or is he another couch? I mean, that's something you could put on your artwork, I think. It's just some guy okay. sort of depressed and the couch is crying or something with a tear. I will do that. I yeah. will absolutely do that. Remind me. Gosh. I like that. Um, Reddit deemed asshole and Fairmont 1955 said, quote, I understand she has a lot going on with the kids, end quote. What a tell on how crappy of a father he is. <laughs> He's like, yeah. oh yeah, she's dealing with the kids. Uh, I didn't even catch that. Yeah. You're I, right. Bit of a red flag for me, for sure. All right. With that, that is it for this episode. I'm not going to do all of the shout outs, but please like, subscribe. That's the best way to, to help promote the show. Uh, if you want, we got extra stories. Uh, on Patreon, you know, patreon.com slash cultivate podcast network. Unlock those. Everything's in the show notes. Stuart from British Murders Podcast. Thank you very much for coming on again. Brother. Thank you Shout for having me. Shout out your it's... podcast. Let the people know who have maybe not heard that episode that you were on or don't know where to find you. Let them know where to find you. Yeah. So my podcast is called British Murders and it's about British murders. And <laughs> the website is britishmurders.com. <laughs> And everything wow. you can find is on there. It's true crime. The case is um, a, a British murders. And <laughs> that's all I cover. So if you've enjoyed this, the show is just... I didn't catch that story. What, what do you cover it's, again? It's, it's, uh, British murders. Sorry. Oh, okay. Should gotcha, have, gotcha. Sorry, oh, okay. Should, should have clarified that. Yeah. Apologies. My bad. I didn't... Yeah. So do you, um, do you cover murders in France? I t- tend to cover British murders generally. Okay. As okay. a rule. Just confirm. Um, just confirm. I wouldn't... Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, no, uh, no, <laughs> no, Why? Yeah. no, 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 I don't do French, but yeah, it's true crime. It's just me. It's 15 to 30 minutes. It's pretty short and bingeable. I think it's all right. My audience seems to enjoy it. So it's great. <laughs> Britishmurders.com. Hell yes. Uh, yeah. Go check that out. If you didn't get that once again, it's Britishmurders.com. Uh, yep. we'll put the link in the show notes to British murders. Uh, where he doesn't cover <laughs> Canadian murders, guys. I'll, I'll send it you just in case. Stop asking, yeah. Stop it's, asking it's, for the Canadian murders. It's every day now. Thank you, Stuart, so much. We hope we have you on again sometime soon. You know, you're welcome. Uh, if we ever want to break from Sean, we know just to invite you on, and he won't be here. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. <laughs> uh, but thank you for your takes today. Thank you, John, for your takes, and thank you, Wikimaniacs, for another amazing episode. We'll see you on Monday. Bye. Comment 69 if you like this episode. <laughs> She's pregnant! <laughs> <You> stupid bitch! <laughs> Coach Patel.